to respect the people who did show up on time. So the recording has started. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSE weekly call. Uh, as always, I, I have to remind everybody of the antitrust policy. Uh, the antitrust policy notice is displayed on the screen for those who are online. Um, please do make yourself uh, knowledgeable about this. Um, this call is public, open to everyone to listen in and even contribute. But we do expect uh, people to follow the rules. So there is two aspects to it. The antitrust policy that I just talked about. And the other piece is the code of conduct, which is also linked from the agenda. And so please, uh, you're welcome to participate, but uh, behave. So with that uh, taken care of, uh, there is, uh, in terms of announcement, as far as I know, there's only one reminder. Uh, as we've uh, discussed before, uh, there is a DCI survey going on. Everybody is uh, welcome to participate, invited to participate, encouraged to participate. Uh, I know that uh, last week, uh, Dan asked uh, people from different projects to spread the word around in the different projects. I've seen evidence of at least some of that happening. And uh, if you haven't done so yet, please do follow up the link and answer the survey. And yes, you might even consider doing that while we're on this call, if this is really what it takes. <laughs> even though I don't encourage uh, distracting yourself from what's being said on the call, but I think it could be done. Is there any other announcement that uh, anybody wants to do before we move on? Sorry, I didn't put mine on, but I'd like to um, reiterate the fact that we are getting all the HGF signups for the tables, the kiosks, and the videos. But I think most of y'all are aware of that by now because I think I've pinged everyone pretty much individually. But if there are other people who do want to do the tables especially, um, this is the part that's going to be a little bit more unconferency like where you have control over it and you can suggest topics. Um, please sign up on the wiki and I'll add that to the notes, the wiki link. All right. Thank you, Silona. Anybody else? All right. Otherwise, let's move on. In terms of quarterly reports, there are three that are due according to our calendar but none of them have been posted yet. So this is my way to highlight the missing part. Sorry, sorry, uh, Iroha has uh, its uh, report already. I ah. published it a little, like a few hours ago. Yeah, I'm a little bit late, but still we have the report and uh, we're here on the call to present the report, if you have time. All right, well, it's okay. I mean, I, given that it was just posted, I can't imagine many people have had a chance to look at it. Uh, if it's okay with you, we'll just keep it for next week. Um, I uh, I will carry that over to next week's agenda. So hopefully people will have time then to have a look at it. And if there are any questions, <clears throat> they can raise them by then. Is there anything from your side? Uh, that must have been Sarah um, King, right? Yeah, that's me, Sarah. Um, no, we don't have any questions about okay. that. I mean, it's a very short report. Uh, things were, they were not like um, hibernating, but it was a little bit slow, a little slower than usual. So the report is kind of short. So, yeah. Okay. No, but that's good. I just didn't want to miss if there was anything you wanted to talk sooner rather than later. So that sounds good. We can wait for the next week. All right. <clears throat> Anything else on the reports? Otherwise, please do keep an eye on the calendar. The calendar for the upcoming reports is posted. Thanks to Rai, they put all the reports into a couple of wiki pages. So there is a chance for everybody to see what's up. And I keep adding those to the agenda week after week. So you can easily quick, uh, click and see when your report is due. So please do keep an eye and let's try to keep the right pace on these reports. Otherwise, you yeah, just no, we, we've, back. We've yep. gone 
I'm sorry. There's there's like no push in this at all anymore. Everything has to be pull. So, you know, we used to get an email reminder or something on the chat channel that hey, your report's due in a week. I haven't seen anything for the performance and scale one. And so it's just, I mean, it's becoming harder and harder to run these things when you have to sit there and pull to find out when your reports are due and stuff like that. Did, All right. Did we agree? I, I thought, well, so we, <clears throat> I thought we said we didn't need work group updates. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so that's two different questions. All right, and I apologize. I did see that one just came out a day ago. So or this morning at 3.30. I understand, but so on the first part, obviously, you know, the, the Chris's question is relevant because if there is no report, then we can forget this whole discussion. Although it still applies for the projects, I suppose. I mean, my understanding, and Ray can tell us exactly what the status is. But previous years, he actually went in the calendar and put calendar reminders for each projects and working groups. But it was kind of a pain to keep uh, doing this and maintaining it and they kind of gave up and put everything in a page instead. Is that right, Rai? Uh, that is, that's the shape of it, yes. Uh, however, um, I, I do, the, the reminders do go out um, to the mailing list, uh, just not to every individual mailing list. Um, so I think the reminders are only going to the TSC list. I'd have to look to see where it is in the calendar, but maintaining because of the way that uh, groups.io works, um, it's a super pain to uh, set this stuff up. Like I can't have a calendar event that sends a mail to two lists, for instance. Okay. No, well, um, I, I think we received uh, the, sorry, uh, I think we received the mail on our Eroha list. But it was like a, a few days ago, like we did not a lot of time. I think it wasn't like as usual. I, I believe that previously we received it in like a, in like a, more than a week even. But this time I think we received it like pretty recently. But maybe I'm wrong. So yeah, yeah I, 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 I doubt that you're wrong. I sent me a, a reminder for the fabric, or you know, me the and the maintainers, but. All right, so maybe if right, you can have a look at how long before it's due you send the reminder and maybe that can be adjusted. But it sounds like the reminders are going out, so at least we have some. I think it was at least a couple of weeks. I think I did mine because you sent out the reminder of the reminder, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, yours was a little bit weird because, uh, you, so uh, the, the issue with yours, Chris, the the one for fabric was that it was uh dropped on the floor right so that's why yours was uh hand delivered oh okay fair enough um the the one everyone else is talking about calendar reminders yeah all right so i don't want to spend everybody's time talking about this detail but uh right can i ask you to follow up and check what the status is and maybe if there is some adjustment that needs to be made. And if sure. you have experienced difficulties with this and have feedback, please contact Rai and so he understands no, what no, you no. Uh, Please contact the uh, community architects mailing list or on chat, right? Okay. That would be, that'd be awesome, thank you. Yeah, it doesn't to be Rai, although Rai seems to be stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to the question Chris touched on though. I mean, I'm a bit confused by your statement, Chris, because this was my idea a few weeks ago. I said, I don't know that we need those working group reports anymore. And I believe you said, no, no, we still want them. So okay. are you saying now we don't need them? I, okay, so I'm just maybe misremembering how we decided this maybe we need a decision <laughs> yes yeah, so um, maybe this is something that should be formally discussed and then decided on because there seems to be we seem to be going back and forth i think i i think what i may have been and again i i don't remember exactly what i said but maybe i was focusing on those that are delivering stuff 
right? That, you know, again, we sort of said there's a loophole and if you're a working group, but you're delivering stuff, um, then we probably want to keep tabs on how that's going. Yes. So, I mean, for just to make sure everybody is on the same page, the reason we're discussing this is because we recently changed working groups, right? And removed the requirements or the expectations for working groups in general to have deliverables. And if they have deliverables or want to have them, except for a few that were grandfathered, uh, they would have to create task force, which are chartered, approved by the TSC to deliver within a certain time frame. So, for those working groups that become just discussion forum, does it make sense to have quarterly reports? And that's really the question that's up now. And so, it seems like now Chris is saying, I only meant to, do, to, to keep the report for those who are grandfathered and are delivering products like uh, documentations and whatnot. Yeah, I came away with the same impression as Chris. I don't know if that's technically the right impression, but that was what I was operating under. I was under that impression as well, that reports were not due unless you had a task force. All right. I mean, we can, we can agree to that and then just, that's it, you know. Why don't we just make a decision? Woohoo! I yes. make a motion that quarterly reports by projects, I mean by working groups are only good if they have a task force. I'll say on that. Can we, uh, does anybody disagree? How do we know it has a task force? We approve them, so we should be aware of that, right? We do? Yes. The TSC is going to approve task force. That's part of the process. Okay. Is there a way that we could have this recorded in writing in regards to the decision logs so that this can be a little bit more clear because I'm having a hard time writing out what this is specifically? I will type it into chat. Is that good enough? We can actually, we can create the, the, the decision let me, log entry yeah, after. Let me, let me do that on the wiki here. Hold on. Uh, of course, I can't find anything anymore. No, but we, I, I don't want to get bogged down with, with the details now. I, I think this, the, the proposal is pretty simple. I'm happy to create the log afterwards to capture the decision. The proposal is, let me say, rephrase it or restate it. The proposal is to say that working groups that do not have deliverables or task forces do not need to uh, submit quarterly reports. Are you creating the proposal for us? Yes, I am typing it now. Do not need to submit quarter reports unless they have a task force. Or deliverable so we can catch the, the grandfathered one. Uh, okay. I was trying to avoid having to do that live, but. Formal proposal based action items. Yeah, it's okay. name, link. Yeah. Do I have to do anything to get the review by to be? Don't worry about it. Just save it as is. Publish. Page yeah. needs a name. Oh, page title. <laughs> uh, Working groups reports. Quarterly reports. But, um, TSC chat, TSC, paste. there you go. <laughs> okay, that will do. Let's everybody sees it. 
Rai is displaying it on the screen. Working groups that are purely discussion group that don't need to be the quarterly reports unless they have deliverables or task forces. Can we agree to this? Weekly? <laughs> what did I say, quarterly? Or what, where did I say weekly? No, no, I said quarterly. Oh, okay, That's sorry. <laughs> no, Our, I said, Arno can we agree to the, no, no, what I meant is, can we agree to this quickly? Oh, quickly, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, yes, yes. I, I, we, I, I move, we vote. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, call vote. the question. Or <laughs> Okay, we have the proposal. It's in the it's in the wiki. I second it. Uh, third it. Whatever. <laughs> I want to vote. Does anybody disagree with this? Does anybody want to abstain? Everybody else agree? Say hi. 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 All right, we're good. It's approved. Thank you. Let's move on. So I think a function of this then is that the calendar needs to be updated. Yes, so that'll be an action item for this, but let's, this can be done after. Let's do, not do more admin stuff now. Let's move on. Do we want to leave it in the calendar just so there's a placeholder if they get a task force or schedule them when they get a task force or deliverable? I think that'll be confusing to the chairs because they think they yeah. I think when they when we approve a task force, then we can add them. And if there is a group that already has deliverables, like we have at least one, uh, they can be kept in the calendar. That's how we do it. Easy enough. All right. So we'll do a cleanup of the calendar for the time being. Let's keep on moving. I have two items that I was hoping to be able to make formal decisions on. The first one is replacing major releases with promoted releases. We've been through this one quite a few times now. Uh, last time I had put a formal proposal, revi revised the proposal based on uh, feedback. Um, I didn't want to call for a vote because it was, I had just put that up before the call. But uh, we discussed it. It sounded like there was general agreement. So now I would like to formally propose it. There was one clarification I added based on the discussion we had, which uh, a heart had uh, requested, which had to do with the fact that there are promoted releases are expected to be initiated at the request of the projects. So is there any further questions on this proposal, or are we ready to vote? The, I also added the link to the criteria for promoted release, remaining the same one, uh, the same as the ones currently defined for first major releases. So there's no ambiguity as what's there. If so, I move we uh, adopt the formal proposal. Thank you. I second that motion. Thank you. All right, maybe we do a, maybe you do a formal vote one by one on that one, right? Can you call? Sure, um, Angelo. Angelo, uh, you're on mute. Arno? Yes. Chris? Yep. Uh, Dan is out. Yes. Gar Gary? <laughs> Wait, out. was that Angelo uh, answering? Yeah, it was me. It was me. I'm okay, that's fine. Thank you. Where were we? Uh, uh, Hart? Yes. Mark? Yes. Nathan? Yeah. Swetha? Yes. Tracy. Yes. Troy. Troy's still not here. So, there you go. Have we heard Gary? He's not here. He's here. He is here. Yes, Gary? not in. Yes. 
We have him triple muted. He doesn't know it. Oh. <laughs> like double secret probation. <laughs> He's oddly silent. That's not him. <laughs> yeah. Well, regardless, <clears throat> the proposal is uh, overwhelmingly passed. Yes. Anybody opposes it? No. All right. Thank you. This is approved. All right. Let's go back to the agenda then. <clears throat> the other one is the one about the repo structure. So we have had that uh, project that was led by Chris through the task force to define a common repository structure and uh, at least a set of files that uh, people are expected to find or to have in every repo. And so there's been some discussion and I want to address that point now. I mean, Dan, you may have seen, uh, said, well, I don't think we we're ready for this because we should get feedback from the maintainers. But I, you know, we have had the proposal up for a while. We discussed it last week and there doesn't seem to be any showstoppers. And I want to be clear, just because we agree on the general idea doesn't mean we cannot amend the details later on as feedback comes in and people gain more experience. <laughs> so if there's a file that people say, oh, that we don't need, or we should read that one that's not listed, we can make those adjustments. This is no different in my opinion than anything else that we do. I'm always in favor of incremental approaches. So, but Chris, I'll let you talk to the proposal. <clears throat> yeah, so um, uh, this is the, uh, yeah, if you scroll to the bottom here. Um, uh, so, so, well, it, you know, before you scroll, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. So before you scroll, so yeah, so the recommendation in my proposal is that we adopt repo linter, which is a tool that the to-do group, which is, a group that was formed to sort of define some best practices for using GitHub um, and open source. Um, and uh, they, they developed a tool that basically goes through and, and does a check um, and says, you know, do you have a <coughs> license file? Do you, have a, do you have a contributing so on and so forth. Um, and in some of those files, it's looking for specific uh, criteria characteristics of the file itself. Um, it also does a sort of a cursory, check of uh, things like, do you have a license and copyright header in your, in your source files? Um, and uh, so if you run this tool against your repository, it comes up with a little report and tells you whether or not you pass or if you have any things that are exceptions, um, it, like in the report that I pasted in here for Fabric. Um, and what I've done is if you scroll down to the end, um, I've mod I, I, one of the things that we talked about all the way to the bottom of the comments, yeah. Um, uh, what we talked about last week was, so um, uh, we want to sort of see what would it look like, you know, if we ran this against everybody. And, and so I did that. And so if you click on that, just, you'll see a report of every repository under the Hyperledger organization has been linted. And, you know, some of them are coming through with, you know, some errors, um, but those things need to be remediated, right? Like there's no copyright or license file on a bunch of these. Um, for Burrow and there was a few for Fabric sub projects and stuff like that. So, um, so my recommendation is that, uh, and well, so it, what what Dan I think suggested was let's run this by the maintainers, and we actually sent a note this morning, pointing to the proposal and to the report that I uh, ran here, um, and sort of asking the maintainers, are you guys good with this? Um, I think you know, as with Arno, I'm 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 happy to socialize this, but. I think, uh, and, and actually what I found was you don't actually have to modify your repository to do this. Rai, you could, you could actually run this from a directory that has the configuration file you want to use, um, and you can just run it against uh, the GitHub um, URL. 
and it downloads a temporary copy and, and, and ints it. Um, and so I actually wrote a script, right, that you could use to just do the whole bunch periodically. Yeah, when you were also, mentioning that, I was thinking this could just be a GitHub action that runs on a cron it, job. It could be a GitHub action, yep, exactly. Um, or it could be built into your CI to make sure you're not uploading a file that doesn't have all this stuff. Um, and so it is what it is. Uh, I, I tweaked it so that it uh, used, a, it created a warning if you didn't have an issue and a um, uh, pull request template. You know, I don't think those are required. They're nice to have. Uh, and I think I created something else as a warning. I'll have to go through and look at the config file. But basically, um, what I did was I submitted a pull request to Fabric to add the config file. Uh, although you don't have to do that. Again, you just have to, whoever runs the report uh, just has to have the config file in the local directory from the, where they run it. Um, and, um, and there we are. So last week, I remember there was some discussion about creating a local fork of the, the tool. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You just have to have the config file in the directory that you're running okay. the, the, the command from. So you, your, your experience has been that with configuration, you can adjust the tool to our yeah. need. This right. is yeah. yeah, it didn't seem like there was any way to, uh, you, you would have to fork the repo to change the config file. Uh, but I read, the, I read through the source code and see what, saw what was going on. And apparently, if you put either a file by the name of repo lint or repo linter .json in the project that you want linted or in the local directory from where you run it, it uses that file. Okay. It's, also, not ever, it's not documented, but that's, that's how it works. All right. Thank you, Chris. So any, any comments or reactions to what is being proposed? Uh, so I, I like this. Uh, the only thing that is confusing is that we have this task force page that doesn't match the decision page. Um, so I, you know, I believe we're, just making a decision here based on the task force page. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, that's my bad. I, I put the proposal in the in the task force page. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, I mean, again, uh, I, I'll, I'll go back and cut and paste it. But basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we probably need to update the. But there's a link to it at the bottom. It says we, see. We started over. the task force before the decision log was created. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we, that, that's a minor uh, mystery detail we can tackle. Uh, I'm more interested in another aspect, which is, so I, you know, I don't know what Dan's uh, concern really was because he, he seemed to be concerned that we would be adopting this too early. And, and for me, it's like, well, I only see benefits, but part of this might be, you know, whether I mean to me, this is not the goal. Is not to give a black eye to 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 project that are see, that look like or reported as non-compliant, but it's really providing guidance as to how to improve your repositories. And and it raises the question of like you know, um, how is that implemented in, on a practical basis? You guys just talked a little about maybe having like a regular. Uh, uh, call, uh, a run of the tool, a linter, on a regular basis. But, I mean, at this point, I haven't heard anybody. My understanding is that we're not trying to enforce this, you know, and again, give black eye to projects that don't comply as much as providing a tool for people to be better at it. So, I, I think... Yeah, yeah, so you raise a good point. So there are some files that are um, nice to have, but then there are also some files that are required, like license, right? You know, um, and, uh, you know, and I think we, you know, the objective here was that we would have a community that was somewhat consistent in uh, all these things. And I don't think it's really a stretch to say you should have a, you know, all of these things. 
I agree that maybe we don't go around beating people over the head with it, um, but maybe share with the maintainers, you know, here's what you, you know, here's where you stand. You can decide whether you want to fix these things or not. Um, but we adopt as a recommended practice that basically what's in that configuration file is, um, is what we'll be looking for. Right. And again, I mean, I've said that before, I believe that, you know, to me, I think a lot of the differences we have from one repo to another today is more accidental just because we don't have any recommended way. And I think, you know, uh, people, are, when there is no recommended way, they have to invent one and they, they invent their own way. And so just providing the tool will help convergence, which is the primary goal here. Because so one of the, one of the things why I think it should be socialized among the maintainers is not all the maintainers are tuned in to what the TSC is discussing. Um, in Besu, we had a case where one of the maintainers was uh, updating a lot of these and didn't realize that, like, for example, code of conduct was one that was important should have changed. He said, well, it's in the wiki. Why does it need to be in the code? Um, so if we come with a sudden requirement that, hey, this is what you're doing, without socializing with the maintainers, it, it might you know, lead to rocky relationships with maintainers who aren't always tuned in with the TSC. So that's why I support socializing with the maintainers before adopting it. I, I don't have a I don't have a an objection to doing that either. By the way, um, okay. even if nothing changed, just the fact that the maintainers were consulted will make them feel more included. And 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 following up on what Dano is talking about, there was a question that was raised by the Bezu team there, which is, you know, is it okay to have a link from the file in the repo to say the wiki page? would that be considered compliant or do they have to copy paste the text? Um, Considering that these repos might be copied as, as zip files um, and that the wiki might change locations over time, I'm more in favor of having the having it self-contained in the text in there, but that's a discussion that TSC can make a decision. Yeah, we, we started having that discussion last week. I think, um, my personal take is I don't have a problem if it's copied. However, it creates sort of immediate technical debt if we decide to modify the, the code of conduct or, um, or the security policy and so forth that we have to go through and, and change them all. Now, again, we could also automate that, right? By, you know, just, you know, we could, just like we did with the security file, you know, automatically submit a pull request to everybody to, to update it with the change, but it is a, it's something that needs to get done if we do make a, a, a change. So that, that would be my only concern. Um, uh, you know, and the repo launcher would catch those changes too. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm fine as long as we're okay that we understand that, you know, there, there can be some out of sync if we aren't. Yeah. Rather can... than calling it technical debt, one advantage to look at it is it provides some is it worth going through this effort to change it? How important is changing this policy rather than just, you know, updating a wiki where it gets changed too frivolously, putting a tiny bit of uh, barrier to changing it makes such changes more measured and deliberate. Well, we, we created it three years ago and we haven't changed it. So. Yeah. The longest running debate. <laughs> <laughs> Who's so, going to try to make Chris lie now? <laughs> just as playing devil's advocate here, um, I've worked in labs that were not connected to the internet and you would have to bring stuff in. So if there's a link to something that's out on the internet, um, I wouldn't be able to get to it. Do we care about that? Yeah, so, so this is to get to the to internet, support. how are they going to engage the community? <clears throat> so to, to, to support your point there, Mark, this is why I bring up this. This is my, the previous project I worked on. And uh, as you can see, it hasn't been updated for six years, right? So this is, this is exactly to your point uh, and, and to Dano's, right? Because if it's not here, if it's not in this copy of a copy of a copy of this repo, it's gone. The wiki and all the documentation that this refers to are gone from the internet. And maybe you can argue that that's fine because the project's dead, but at the same time, you know, it, 
the code does live on. So I would be much more in favor of like not linking to anything else online. Because I said the files are when I download something, it it those rules in effect for that code, right? Until I update. Yeah. But you know, at the same time, if people don't update their copy, well, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's it's like it can be a project's decision. There's a new version. It's nothing different than any other dependencies you have from one project to another. At some point, you have to decide, hey, we upgrade to the new version. And it can be left to each project to make the decision when, when it's the right time. So I think there is more advantages to having a co local copy with all the text in it than having a link that can be dangling because that unfortunately happens more often than we'd like and that's the worst you can have is to have a file with just a link that points nowhere all right i'm, I'm good with that all right so it sounds like we are in favor of not having just links but we want to at least have the content there Of course, we could do the dirt we see thing, which is to say, you know, to have a link at the top that says for the letters version of this, say, code of conduct, see this page. <laughs> and then I will copy anyway. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to get too fancy. I don't know that it's worth worrying too much about that. All right, but that does work if you've got a local. Yeah. Okay, anyone else, any comments? It sounds like, you know, I hear people are in favor of kind of not rushing into the decision, but it would be good that we agree that there is this the general direction we want to go, and then we can socialize it, and maybe in a week or two, then we make a formal decision that this is it now, we have adopted this as a policy. And for now, we don't have to make a formal decision I just want to hear if anybody has concerns with the proposed approach. Um, I have two questions. Uh, question number one is, will this apply to the labs repos? I'm assuming yes. Uh, and question number two, Chris, is there a way, how do I run this on my repo? That was the part I couldn't figure out. Um, if you want to run it on your, what I, what I can do is I can put together um, a little readme, a little, <laughs> little, you know, guide for how to use the tool. For how to use it. Okay, read that me would be is, helpful. Read me is, is uh, uh, pretty uh, uninformative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure you that they take pull requests. <laughs> just installing the tool is a pain in the ass because you got to make sure you have Node up to current, you know, version. Oh, you Lord. Have, you have a new version of Ruby. You have to download some dependencies. Okay. It's a pain. I, I'll, I'll put together a little guide for how to do it but basically um, <clears throat> you can run it from uh, a directory that has the config file in it and point it at your github uh, pretty straightforward but I'll, I'll, I'll put together a little uh, cheat sheet okay that'd be great yeah. um, and labs yes labs no um, you know I um, I think it would be a great idea. I don't know what others think. Um, I would be in favor of that. Uh, again, if it's not an enforced thing, but a sort of an advisory thing, I suppose. That's what my thinking think? too, is that we what? don't have to enforce it, but we can say, hey, you might consider to do this, you know, so that we can kind of guide them in the right direction. Tracy is a lab steward, Vivian. I mean, uh, do the other lab stewards have any opinion on that? Um, I mean, I'm fine with it. I, I think, you know, the intention is eventually, potentially the labs become projects, right? And if they're following through on kind of these best practices that we're trying to put in place, then it makes sense to me. Exactly, but, make the transition easier. And as somebody with the labs repos, a couple of them, I'm 
perfectly happy to do my best to and it, it's not like these are onerous requests so no great. but that's a good point mix thank you for bringing that up i think you know there there may be uh i don't know if dave is on for instance but you know if we require a security file for instance on a lab um do we do we want to encourage you know that people submit security defects for labs i don't know i mean i'm i'm just um i guess there's some implications i agree Nick. it's a good idea i mean i think if i had a lab i'd want others playing in that sandbox that's why it's there yeah and so having a contributions guide and the the contributions guide, code of conduct, all of the other things are good. Right. I think the the only issue on the security side of things that for the labs, it might be good that we have a standard labs disclaimer that basically says, you know, this is prototype code, right? You know, what you pay for. Um, I mean, we've tried to write that all over all of our documentation, but but having a standard place that that yeah. that disclaimer is called out would be a good thing. So maybe yeah, if we came up with a different security file, I suppose that might yeah. be. I don't know okay. if we want to go through all the trouble to report because again, it's a it's prototype code basically. It's not intended to be used for production. Correct. I mean, for some labs though that are security focused, you still might want to have some of the security stuff. Well, yeah. See again, I, I'm just being more rigorous is not a bad thing. Being yeah. forcing all every lab repo to be that rigorous would be a very bad thing though. Sure. Yeah, I totally agree. I just think that some some labs that would be a, a actually a really nice thing to have. And you know, actually, you know, thinking about this a little bit more, but maybe you know, maybe the 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 rule of thumb is that if you're an uh, active project um you should with a capital should be compliant. And if you're incubating, you know, you may, right? Um, and, you know, 20, RFC 2119 parlance, uh, you know, where it should is, you have to have a damn good reason not to be compliant um, for an active project. Because I, I mean, yeah, I think the expectation is that it's a little bit more mature. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's part of what we're doing in the community. It's, it's abiding by all the, guidelines set by the TSC and so forth. That's one of the great, you know, so it's, sh you know, it should with the capital should not, a, not necessarily a must, but you know, there has to be a compelling reason not to. And then for labs, it's a may. Okay. So let's leave it at this for now. And there may be some adjustment that makes sense to make for the labs, but it seems like we, there's general agreement on the direction. Yeah. So let's go Great. with this. And, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through, I'll update the actual decision log with the proposal. Yes. Uh, and, you know, this. with what we described, you know, what we just discussed here. And um, that way we can go off of that. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Yep. All right, let's move on. There's two more things that I want to discuss. This kind of one thing, maybe, although Dave is not here, but he marked. We have a couple of, uh, I mean, we went through a whole list of issues related to the TSC election process. And uh, there were a couple that were left pending. And Dave has marked them as blocking. And I asked him, what do you mean by blocking? What is this blocking? And he said, well, it's blocking the staff from implementing, uh, you know, the part that's of the process we agreed to, which is the staff will come up with the plan for running the election that will be, you know, uh, put before the TSC beforehand so everybody knows what exactly the expectation is. And so he's basically saying that, and if he, Dave is on, I'm happy to let him talk, but I believe that I captured this anyway. Oh yeah, I see Dev now, I'm sorry. Um, and you know, um, the, the, the problem is if he's saying that if we don't answer those, if we don't address those issues, then they have a gap in what they need for, uh, to put the plan together. 
so Dave, you're on. I'm sorry I didn't see your name first, but uh, is there more to say on that or did I capture the crux of the matter? Here. Dave, Dave, are you on mute? I see his mic going, but I don't think he's coming through. Breaking up badly, I think. No, it's not well, coming. I through. think um, uh, you captured uh, the, the crux of it. Um, what we, I, speaking for myself, I, I want this, uh, I want the TSC to make these decisions so that we can have a much smoother TSC election. And the sooner it's done, uh, the sooner we can start, the sooner the decisions are made, the sooner we can start implementing them. So it's, it is really blocking us, the, the community architect staff, from getting stuff going. And that's why we're asking for this. Yeah, there's a bunch of decisions that have to be made and there's a bunch of also some things that have to go a little bit more farther forward and I need to give clearer direction to LFIT because there's a lot of this stuff that's actually being nailed out right now that they're about to start doing software development on. So the sooner we can give them um, a very clear agenda in regards to how this would we would like for this to be run, the sooner development can start working on it because okay. we're doing things like trying to figure out the LFID situation versus the GitHub ID situation, identifying the different maintainers, all you know, who, who can vote, all of that is really important qualifications that we need to give to an entity that's outside of ourselves as well. Okay, so, so thank you. And so I would like to go to the TSC members now and ask them for feedback because I mean, the reason we haven't really made any effort to address those lately is twofold from what I understand. So there are two. The first one is this TSC election voter selection. I believe there was a bit of fatigue, quite frankly, and everybody was kind of fed up. And I saw that, you know, the one of the comments I already got was, oh, let's not talk about this anymore. And so it's clear that, you know, there isn't much interest in discussing this, this type of issue anymore at the same time. I do understand the challenge that the staff is uh, is facing, and I don't want to ignore that. But um, there was this notion of the lecture of voter selections, election voter selection, which is entirely up to us. And the other one is the observer. And if you go to the observer, you'll see that the last was that. We basically said, well, it raises some privacy issue, and we should really get guidance from the governing board on this and vpin and shared saying i think that's bollocks and <laughs> we there's no issue we just have to make a decision so i i just wanted to without getting into the gory details of each issue i just wanted more you know to get a sense of how the the, the members of the tsc feel about those issues do we have an agreement that we should spend a bit more energy back onto those issues what about this privacy issue with regard to the observers? Is that an issue or do we want to go to the governing board, which I, I don't think we have done. So Arno, I mean, I guess I'm trying to figure out why the last four years have been bad um, in doing these elections. You know, what, what, what has changed since the last election or the last four elections? that make us think that we need to change what we're doing. Secondly, uh, this is written into the governing, into our charter, right? So if any changes were to happen, it feels like the, the place that we may end up having to go anyway is the governing board. Right. I, I'm kind of with um, Tracy on this. I, I don't, and I said this the last time, I don't understand why we're, reopening this can of worms right i mean we have a pretty good process for deciding who uh, is eligible to vote um the staff has been you know they have tooling that can determine this now are they able to chase everybody down no but okay 
But the biggest problem is not finding people who are eligible. It's getting people who are eligible to vote. That's, so I don't understand why we think we're not, you know, picking up people because we also have an exception process that says, if you're not on this list and you think you deserve to be on the list, contact the staff. So we have a, a vehicle to get on there and we have a vehicle to collect who's contributing. And frankly, you know, if you're a working group and you're produ or a task force and you're producing something, put it in GitHub. This isn't hard. Well, so I don't understand why well, we're opening Hold on, up hold on, here. hold on. Uh, this uh, argument has been going on for a while. The charter says anyone who contributes technical artifacts to the code base, um, the code base has been narrowly, uh, in, uh, you know, sort of targeted to GitHub only. Uh, technical artifact, including documentation, it says, and you have set up a wiki, you have set up all kinds of other Google Docs and everything else. And that's why you involved the uh, working group chairs to get uh, the names. So the uh, I, I don't think that, and every election cycle, we come to the same point, which is how do we find out uh, the uh, who are the contributors? Uh, technic of technical artifacts. So I think you should broaden your base. Uh, and I agree with Chris that the uh, participation rate is a big problem and, it's, and it is, uh, you know, always a problem in many, many elections, including, you know, national elections. And they have um, ways in which you can address this and I have already suggested some of them, which was to send out an email saying, you know, this percentage has voted. Uh, okay. We would like the participation to be more, you know, something like that, uh, you know, over the course of the conduct of the election. So that, you know, these are all standard methods. Uh, I agree that, you know, raising the participation rate is important for uh, people to get uh, you know, represented, uh, I mean, to for the TSE to be a true representation of the community, uh, if it is confined to small numbers of people, then, you know, you, you're going to get some skew in the, ele uh, in the elected uh, body. And that's what's happening. I, I, it's been a concern. And okay. That, uh, that has been, uh, you know, broadly touted. So for us, as a community, it behooves us to address these problems, not just say, oh, if, if people are not on the list, uh, let them, uh, uh, you know, let them object. That, that never works. You know, wh whenever you have a choice architecture that says somebody has to do something in order to get on board, then it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's another friction that is added to the uh, mix. All right, thank you, Vipin. I mean, we, we I, I, as you said, we've been through this uh, quite a few times and I, so far I don't hear anything really new, unfortunately. But uh, so one thing that I, he, I did hear, which makes me, you know, uh, think a bit is, in fact, what Tracy is saying, we have a status quo that has worked for the last several years. And so, if we make no decisions on any of those two issues for that matter, things just get carried forward the way they have done, been done so far. And so I would actually claim based on that statement, which I think is accurate, is that these are not actually blocking. The staff you know, should just continue what has been done until we make a decision on those things. If we don't make decisions, this means the status quo doesn't change. Now, we might want to still capture the status quo in response to those. And I would claim that we have a, we have a process, as Chris alluded to, there's a tools that the staff uses to build the list with the exception process and all that. We could capture all of that and just document this 
so that everybody can see that in response to the first uh, the, the uh, issue on the, the voter selection. And then for the second one, the default is there is no observer until somebody comes up with a proposal that everybody feels excited about to support, there's just no observer. And that would be an easy way to solve those two issues for now and you know move forward. But I would claim this is just capturing the status quo. We are basically out of time, so unfortunately there isn't much time, but I wanted to get a reaction to this. Am I missing something here? No, I think you got a reaction. I got a reaction. Where? There's been a lot of reaction to this, right? So <clears throat> I haven't even jumped it's in yet. The status quo is not good, and I understand that's how he feels, and I respect that. But um... I guess the okay. <laughs> So I'm somebody who's sat on both sides of this, right? I ran the TSC election yes. for two years. I'm now on the TSC. Uh, status quo is not good. That means that the process that I created is not good. Uh, so I'm taking a bit of offense at this point, but I think that if I were still on the community architect team and I were <coughs> having a problem running the scripts and doing the steps that need to be done, I would take the necessary steps to fix that as any developer would, right? If the process that you have doesn't work well, you go and you fix it. Uh, I don't think that we as the TSC need to weigh in on somebody fixing those scripts. They're part of a lab. Anybody can go in and fix them. So anyway, I, I don't want to get into a lot of detail here because it's somewhat frustrating for me to be listening to this conversation for the 10th time. Uh, so you take it for what you will. All right. Thank you, Tracy. So unfortunately, uh, we're right out of time. So that's it for today. But uh, I, you know, I would move to capture the status quo in these issues for now and make that the default resolution and i challenge anyone who feels like this needs to be modified to make concrete proposals on how to modify them and at least we would have a solid uh, starting point so that uh, is the course of action that i suggest we take and i will move towards that so with that being said i want to respect everybody's time you did make me <laughs> wrong again uh, making this call shorter but it's all right um, thank you all for participating today and uh, see you again next week <laughs>